Welcome to Windows Labs. Today we're going to talk about Remote Desktop RDB. Uh, for our demonstration we're going to use Windows 7 and Windows XP. You can see Windows 7 on the left, XP on the right. They're both professional so they both have the Remote Desktop Terminal capability. So to activate that we're going to go ahead and click on Start and right click, go to Properties of Computer and go to Remote settings and by default remote assist is on but we want to do remote desktop so remote desktop has three settings essentially no connections allow connections with uh, less secure and allowing connections that have remote desktop with uh, authenticated level which is more secure so in our case we're going to go with the middle one so our version of XP may not necessarily have you know what we need. So here we can select users and if you have a user create you can just click add and then type in their username and go in there. So I don't currently have any right now so we're going to add them. But I also note that if anybody's also administrator has remote desktop capability it wouldn't show up in here automatically. They would just have that access. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to hit apply. So we want that to, to work. So from here, we're going to start, right click again, go to manage, and we're going to go to local users, and let's go ahead and create a user, let's call it user1, password 1234, 1234, and we're going to uncheck so that the password doesn't require to change. Hit create. So there's two ways we can do this. We can go in here, highlight the user account, right click, go to properties, and then go to members, and then click add, and then we can click find, and then scroll down to remote desktop, hit OK, and hit apply. The other way we could have done is gone to groups and go to remote desktop, go to properties, and you can see that we already added them since we went the other way. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. Close out of that. Now we're gonna hop into our Windows, our Windows, uh, our Windows XP, and do the same thing. We're gonna right click, go to properties, remote desktop we're going to go to remote desktop you can see here it doesn't give us a lot of choices it's just basically enabled or not enabled and we can go here and select same thing any member that's administrator will be here they just won't be listed so we can go ahead and click add to if we wanted to so I'm going to say ok hit apply and ok same thing we're going to start right click and go to manage so here we can create a user on user one put in the password of one two three four check so it doesn't require us to change passwords This time we're going to go to groups and you can see here with XP you have less. So we're going to go to remote desktop users, go click that, click add, and then we're going to put in user1, check names, that should resolve it. Excellent. We're going to hit OK and hit OK and close out of that. So here is a quick check. If we right click, go to properties, and then go to remote, select users, you can see user one is there. Excellent. So now we need to do a couple quick things. We need to know the IP address of the machine that we're going to. 
Mexico. We can do that by going to the command prompt and then putting in ipconfig command. We don't need to do it all, we just need just the IP address. Accessories, and then go to Remote Desktop, and then type in the IP address of the other machine, 192.168.111.f2. And then here it's just going to say, hey, we're using an older version. Uh, you can go ahead and say, click, uh, don't ask again, or you can just leave it the way it is. And then here we're going to put in user1 and it's password1234. And then here this is just saying essentially that you know someone's logged into the terminal. If we're going to hit yes, they're going to get logged out. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And then you can see over here on the other machine it says we'll be disconnected. We wish you want to connect. So say yes. So now you can see that we're now remotely controlling the PC and then here on the right on the XP you can see that the administrator or the admin the admin either is logged in currently has one program running and you can see that user one is now logged in with the remote desktop using you know workstation you cannot have two people logged in at the same time, it's one or the other. So in our case, since we have one user logged in, you know, the other person's logged out, so at the physical desk, it would look like this. They would just see this screen when they would wake up the monitor. They would see that they're currently logged in and the other user is logged in as, is logged in as user one. All right, so if admin decides to go back in there, going to let you in and then over here you're essentially going to be forced to you know you can't launch any other applications so essentially you're forced out of the machine and therefore you're out all right so quick uh, options here you could preloaded the username if you wanted to so you could also set up where you have full screen quality of uh, display, local resources. So if you want to map, you know, your keyboard, printer, clipboard, audio, things like that, you can. Programs, if you want to actually start, to, once you connect to the remote desktop, start some specific applications, you can experiment so if you have high speed you know you know you can go here choose some of your different speeds by default it's low broadband speed you could also allow you know these additional items if you want and then here you can have your authentication warn me disconnect me don't connect Configure anywhere. So you can use a RDP gateway. This is a uh, a new thing with 2011 server, which is 2008 server. You can set up as a gateway server. So now that we try this. You can see that we're gonna again when I go ahead and type in that password and it's gonna give us a choice to log in and then if this person sees this message he can say no hey I don't want this person to log in it's gonna say currently you cannot connect and therefore that's where it'll stay and then over here 
here. If we did the same thing, go to programs, go to accessories, and then under communications, and type in the IP address. I'm going to look up this IP address here. the same thing sure yes and then here you can see in 30 seconds if I don't uh, click OK or cancel which I'm just gonna do just so we don't have to wait for the 30 seconds and now you can see this other side is not preparing same thing just like if I was on that machine all right so that's it just a couple key factors you need to know you need to know that you have to have a username password and the user has to be in the remote desktop or administrator group and you have to have the remote desktop enabled and it has to be a pro version or better on the Windows so like Windows Starter Windows Home Premium does not have this capability it does have the software to remote desktop to but you cannot remote desktop to it all right that's it thanks for watching bye